In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the exponential moving average, or EMA, and learn how to use the indicator to find potential trend reversals. If you are already familiar with the simple moving average, you'll find that the exponential moving average is incredibly similar. However, the EMA places more significance on the more recent prices, whereas the SMA weights them all equally. So today, we'll be discussing how the study is actually calculated. We'll go through a few practical examples of how you guys can use it to find both buy and sell signals. And towards the end, we'll also discuss how you guys can create a custom scan to actually find those stocks that had a recent EMA crossover. To begin with, let's first discuss how the EMA is actually calculated. Now, luckily for us, the exponential moving average is incredibly similar to the simple moving average. However, like I said before, it does put more weighting towards the more recent price action. So looking here at the formula, it would look something like this. The EMA is equal to the closing price times the multiplier plus the previous EMA times one minus the multiplier. The multiplier in there being found using the following formula. Multiplier equals two divided by the number of time periods plus one. Okay, so looking at that, it may be a bit more confusing than the simple moving average, but don't worry, you guys don't have to remember any of this. All you do need to remember is that the EMA puts more weighting towards the more near-term prices and weights them more heavily than the older time periods. Basically just saying that the price from yesterday was more important than the day prior. So we'll just weight that one more heavily, make it more important for the overall study. The main noticeable difference that you'll see between the two indicators is that the EMA line will be more sensitive to recent price changes. Basically, the line is going to move more quickly than the SMA line. Again, no need to remember any of that formula, but now that you guys have a basic understanding of how it is calculated, let's next go over how we would add it to our charts within Thinkorswim. Like all indicators inside of the platform, in order to add them, we'll simply come over here to the Studies icon in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and select that. From there, in the Settings menu, we can then see all of the studies available to us over here on the left hand side. And scrolling through them here, you can see there are quite a few. In order for us to quickly find the exponential moving average, we'll simply come up here to the black search box and type in EXP. Looking down below in the list, you can then see the moving average exponential or EMA line. So we'll go ahead and click on that and then hit add selected. From there, you can then see that the EMA line gets overlaid on the price section, which just means it's going to overlay the chart itself. It's going to be in the upper section of our chart. Now, before I actually add it to my chart, if I wanted to change any of the input parameters, so basically how the line is calculated, or change the appearance settings, the way that it looks, I could come over here to the settings icon on the right hand side. From there, I'm actually going to change this from the 9 period EMA to the 50 period. I'm going to go ahead and change that right there. I'm next going to come down to the general appearance settings. I'm going to leave it as the color that it's currently set, but I am going to make it a little bit wider so it's easier to see. But those are going to be the only changes that I make, and I'm actually happy with it now, so I'll go ahead and hit OK, and OK one more time. So now looking at my chart here, you can see that I do have the 50 period EMA, and if I look in the upper left hand corner, since this is a daily chart, this is the 50 day EMA line. So now that we actually have the study on our chart, there are actually a few different ways that we can use this to find potential buy or sell indications. The first of these methods is by finding a recent price crossover above or below the EMA line. When the price of the stock crosses above the EMA line, it's a potential buy signal. Whereas when the price crosses below the EMA line, it's a sell signal. Looking here on this AMD chart, I'm sure we can find quite a few examples of this. And actually, if I zoom in just a little bit, starting on the left hand side of the chart, if I come over here to the May 28th time period, I could actually highlight this period right here. Looking there, we can actually see that candlestick crossed above the 50 period EMA, meaning we had a potential buy signal right there. Looking a little bit further to the right, we can then see that that 50 period EMA almost acted as a level of support. We can see the price constantly was bouncing off that 50 period EMA line. If we were to scroll a little bit further to the right, I'm going to try and find a period where it actually broke through that area of support. And we can actually see it happen right here, it looks like on January 5th. So that right there where the actual price of the stock crossed below the EMA line, that would have been our sell signal. Just to the right of that, we can then see it acted almost as a level of resistance because the price sold off bounced back off the 50 period EMA, sold off, bounced off it again right here, kind of sold off again, bounced off it. And if we scroll a little bit further, we can then see a point where it crossed above and then below again. So here is another sell indication right here. But I think you guys get the idea. This one's pretty straightforward. We're just looking for recent price crossovers when the actual stock price crossed above or below that EMA line. The second strategy that we're going to discuss is actually going to require two moving average lines because we're looking for a moving average crossover. This is going to include one longer term EMA line and one shorter term EMA line. 
When the shorter term EMA crosses above or below the longer term EMA, that's going to act as our potential buy or sell signal. The most popular of these being used is the 50 period versus 200 period EMA lines. Now, if you're more of a shorter term trader, you may also use the 20 versus 50 or the 12 versus 26. The time period that you use is really going to end up depending on how fast you like to get in or out of your trades. Now, if we wanted to see an example of this, I'm going to come up here to my studies icon once again. I'm then going to come over here and add another exponential moving average line. So we'll just go through this quickly. We'll add another line and then I'm going to edit this to actually include the 200 period EMA line. We'll also come down and change the color so they both stand out a little bit better, make the line a little bit wider. And now that I'm happy with that, we can now see the 50 period versus 200 period EMA on our chart right now. So remember, what we're looking for in this second example is actual moving average crossovers. So looking right here on this AMD chart, we can see a time period where the 50 period EMA crossed below the 200 period EMA. This right here on it looks like April 11th would have been our sell signal right here. If we were to look back in time for a buy signal using these crossovers, I don't believe we can find one here on AMD and we can't. So let's go ahead and use a different stock as an example, nothing on Apple. Uh, but here we can see on, it looks like Airbnb, a time period right here on September 23rd when there was a crossover. So right there where I highlighted, you can see the 50 period EMA crossing above the 200 period EMA. That would be our buy signal right there. But I think you guys get the idea this is actually a very simple indicator to go off of, a simple indicator to find potential trend reversals or find areas of support or resistance using these lines. Now, of course, like all other indicators, the EMA lines are not perfect. However, they may be able to give you some insight as to the overall trend in the stock and maybe be aware of potential trend reversals. So now that we understand how we can use the EMA to find potential buy or sell signals, let's next go over how we would create a scan within Thinkorswim to find those stocks that meet this criteria right now. So what we need to do is come up here to the scan tab right at the very top here and make sure we have the stock hacker selected. Now the scan I create in today's video will be looking for an EMA crossover and specifically the 50 period EMA crossing above the 200 period EMA. So a buy signal. In order for us to do that, what we'll do is come over here to the add a filter box. Looking down below, we'll specifically select a study filter. You'll immediately see that the study filter that pops up is called the ADX crossover. Now what we're going to do is actually click on that because it's actually a drop down menu. Down below, you'll then see all of the pre-made study filters that we could actually use. But in my case, we actually need to create our own. So I'm going to come down to the very bottom and select custom. From there, we'll then get our pop-up box and let me go ahead and drag that down so you guys can see it. This is where we can then create our own study filter, our own custom scanner. Now, the very first thing we need to do is go ahead and delete what automatically pops up here. So that ADX crossover, let's go ahead and get rid of that. I'm then going to come down to the lower left hand corner and select add a condition. In this pop up window, we then need to select what it is we're actually looking for. So in my case, I'm looking for the 50 period EMA crossing above the 200 period EMA today. So in order to do that, we'll come up here and select a condition. It's going to be a study condition. We'll then come up here to the search box and type in EXP for exponential moving average. We can then come down and select the moving average exponential. We then need to specify that we're looking for the 50 period EMA. So I'm going to come down here to the length and change that from 9 to 50 right here. I then need to come over to the right and specify I'm looking for the 50 period crossing above the 200 period. So select crosses above right there. I'm then going to come over here to select a condition. It's going to be a study condition and we're basically just doing exactly what we did before, finding moving average exponential. The very last thing I need to do is come down here to the length and just change that from the nine period SMA to the 200 period. Now, finally, the very last thing you guys might need to check on is if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, down below, you can see right here, I've got within one bar selected, meaning this 50 day crossover has happened within the last one bar or one day. If you guys wanted to widen out these parameters, maybe you wanted to look for this happening in the last two days or five days or 10 days, this is where you would change that. So if you guys were okay with this happening in the last 10 days, you would make that 10 bars. If you were okay looking for it happening in the last two days, you would make it two bars. I think you guys get the idea. But in my case, I am happy with the scan at the moment. So I'm just gonna come down here and hit save and hit okay. So looking up here at the top, you can see my current think script and I am looking for the 50 period EMA crossing above the 200. So now that I'm happy with that, we'll just go ahead and hit scan over here on the right hand side. Looking down below, we can see there are 31 results. So basically 31 companies that match our criteria right now. 
Now, of course, you guys would add additional filters to this to really narrow it down further, because I'm sure there's a lot of companies in here you guys would have no interest in trading. But if we did want to double check our scanner as of right now, we could come down here and double check one of these guys. Like right now, we can see HLVX matches our criteria. So what we could do is come up here to the charts tab and actually throw that stock ticker up there. I believe it's HLVX here. Looking here, I can actually see this guy has only been trading for two days, but it does match our criteria. The 50 period EMA crossed above the 200 period EMA in the past day. If we wanted to look at another guy, let's go back to the scan tab, see if there's any that uh, actually stick out a little bit more. What about this guy, NVCN? NVCN here. And just like before, we can see that it does meet our criteria. The 50 period EMA crossed above the 200 period in the last day. But hopefully you guys see how useful these scanners can be to really find those stocks that match our criteria right now. So hopefully we're not wasting our time just watching Amazon all day, waiting for the crossover to happen. Amazon will only show up as a result when it already meets our buy or sell criteria. But that covers just about everything you guys need to know to get started using the exponential moving average. If you guys do have additional questions for me or recommendations for other studies you guys would like me to discuss, please leave them down below. But that wraps up today's video on the EMA. I hope you guys all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.